Hello. So let's talk about how we can um, add data to a form inside OpenFlow. So I have a simple form. I have three buttons. I have a text field and I have a drop down list without any data. And inside Node-RED, I have a simple workflow. Uh, and I have a switch statement that looks at whatever submit button was clicked. If I click the complete button, it will uh, complete the workflow. If I click anything else, it will go idle and keep showing the workflow, uh, the same form. So if I go to workflows, here is the form. I can add data to it. Um, I can see that it's running, uh, it saves the state, uh, but I have a drop down list without any information. And if I click complete, it completes the form. It is now gone from the front page, but if I go to completed workflows, I can see the ones that I have already run. So there's many ways to do this, but right now uh, using JavaScript code is just the easiest way to continue with this. So <coughs> if we start by going in and say, we wanna make sure that uh, payload is actually an object. So if it is not an object, then make it an object. So message payload is where all the information from and to the form goes. So if I set payload text equals my work form, as you can see inside the form, the text field has the API name text. So I can reference this field by using the property text. And that means that if I open my, oh yeah, I completed that. If I open a workflow, the text field now says high web form. Um, if I try and change it, it goes back to high web form. So an easy way of making sure that we have defaults is simply to go in and say, if it doesn't have a value, set the value high web form. Otherwise we won't touch it. So now if I submit, it says high web form, but if I add a value, it continues to have the value that I chose. Um, let's move on to the, the select. So on the message payload object, we can add a object called values. And values are used for handling defaults inside um, components that supports having multiple values. Um, so that could be a drop down list, it could be radio buttons, it could be, yeah, there's a couple of others. So inside the form right now, we have a select and it has the API name select. So what I can do is I can say methods payload values and select I want that to have a, a list of defaults this can either be a list of objects and we can then map the different fields from those objects as either the value or the label on that but for more simple data structures um, in this case we can simply say option one and option two as a simple array of strings. And if I then go back now, you will see that, oh, I need to submit. You will see that now it has option one and option two. If I select option two, uh, it saves that it has now option two selected. Um, I can also set it from the form. So if I say I want payload.select to have the value of option one. So now if I submit, it now has the value option one. Uh, if I select option two, it will go back to option one. If I delete it, it will go back to option one. So again, in this case, we could decide to say only if 
nothing has been selected, set it to option one. That way we now have a default value. So if we complete the form and start it once more, we now have a default value in text and a default value in our select button. Let's select drop down list, whatever. Um, a more advanced way of working with the form would be to work with form data or a grid, sorry, a grid of data. Um, so this could be a CSV file or, or something else. Um, so we have a data grid. Data grid is, is nice for quickly showing some data uh, that is non-editable. So if I grab in uh, a table and let's um, sorry two. I can now add a text field. Let's uh, say this is name with the API field of name. And this is going to be uh, disabled. And I'm going to disable adding and remove the rows because that will not work here. Um, and I can add a text field. Uh, actually. Let's use the text field. Um, age. Uh, and that is going to be disabled as well. So now I have a data table with two fields, name and age. So, and I forgot to name the grid. <laughs> so let's go in and give the grid a name. So the API name is going to be grid. Save. So now inside message.payload, I can assign payload.grid an array. And the array is going to be an array of objects. So we could say ID1 has a name of Alan and an age 23. We can add a couple of more. So And now if I go back and submit the form, I now have the values uh, easily readable in a table structure. Uh, and those can then be dynamically updated or data pooled from something or whatever. But imagine that you want the user to actually be able to edit this. What we can do is we can change the form to an edit form. So I'm going to go in and say edit grid and I'm going to move this, come on, damn this is not going very well for me, let's try that again, <laughs> edit grid. And there we go. And now I can remove the old grid and I can remain rename this grid to be called grid. And I need to make these edible again. There we go. I believe this is it. Save. So if I go back in now, I see name, Bettina, and, and so on. Um, so <clears throat> I have name and age. Uh, I can edit them. Um, but once I do that, it returns to the old values because we are not setting defaults, we are overriding it every single time. So again, 
we go in and say only if we don't have data for the grid. That is where we're going to set it. So now if I go in and edit the name, you can see that the name has uh, been actually changed. Um, so with uh, with age and so on, I can delete some um, and it will remember it. So if I go back again, the edit is there. Uh, we can add stuff so I can add one more here and submit it and it will actually remember that it has now been edited and I can actually see the data over here. Um, I guess this, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll cover files and, and more advanced things at another video. So um, good luck.